can tell somebody it's time to give God a praise. <laughs> John Belser, First Baptist, Melrose Park, thanking you for being a part of our Bible class for Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022. We thank and praise God for you and for yours and for everything that you have done to support and be a part of this great gospel ministry. And let me thank you for sharing, for encouraging us, for uh, viewing, for doing everything that you have done over these years, and especially these past two years in which we have not been able to have Bible class in the sanctuary. And we're trusting God that by the end of this year, maybe in a few months, who knows, things will change. But in the meantime, we are going to continue sharing the word of God in whatever form we can each week as we have for the last two years, just like this. Amen. Now, let me share with you also that next Wednesday, March the 2nd, is Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of the Lent season. Lent, which the word comes from an old English word, means lengthening of days. And as we have all noticed, that there has been much more daylight, much more sunlight, praise God, as we have gone into the late winter, early spring season. The 40 days also marks the 40 days that Jesus Christ fasted and prayed in the wilderness, preparing for his gospel ministry. But from next Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, all the way up until that Saturday before Easter, which is April the 16th, uh, Lent, the 40 days does not include each Sunday. Those Sundays are ex excluded. We're going to have a time and a period in which uh, we fast, pray, consecrate ourselves, uh, study the word of God, share the word of God with others, uh, abstain from things that are not maybe not necessarily sinful, but maybe not uh, healthy for us. Uh, I know some people that like to say, I I'm not going to eat as much chocolate. Well, listen, if, if you eat chocolate every day or if you eat chocolate to the point where it's not good for you, that's a good thing to separate from. Soda pop, chicken wings, talking by myself here, uh, you know, sweets, whatever. Uh, people fast for one day, two days, three days, longer period, sometimes a shorter period, 12 hours, but whatever it is, it's a period of self-denial in which we offer to God our love for him. And as my dear friend, uh, Bishop Willie J. Chambers often says, turning that plate upside down and going after God yields great results. Amen. And I'm a witness to that. And I have many of you who can witness this as well. So please, if you will, each Wednesday, starting next Wednesday, we will have lessons which will help to strengthen your faith, which will help guide you in your time and period of consecration. Join us each Wednesday at 12 noon. And then we're looking forward we're looking forward. This is a tentative date, but I will share more details as we get closer. On Good Friday, April the 15th, 2022, at 12 noon, we're asking you to come plan to be a part of our Good Friday service. This will be our first Good Friday service, of course, since 2019. So we're looking forward to that. 
and I will share more details with you as we get closer. Amen. God bless you. Let's go into this lesson for today. Uh, I have to put a quart into a pint, but the, the Holy Spirit is going to lead and guide us as we study. This last installment on spiritual warfare, I want to share with you from the, these words, the power of prayer in spiritual warfare. The power of prayer in spiritual warfare. Many people overlook the fact Many Christians overlook the fact that prayer is the most powerful and effective weapon that we have in spiritual warfare. Because, and I've, I've used this analogy before, but it's true. As Christians, we are soldiers in the army of the Lord. And as soldiers living here on earth, we're actually in enemy territory. Don't be surprised how things are so out of pocket and cutting against the grain and how it seems like as Christians, we're always outnumbered and always outgunned because there are so many things going on around us. Well, it may seem that we're outnumbered, but remember, greater is he in us than he that's in the world. And even though the customs and the trends of the world are all against holiness, all against the things of God, all against accepting Jesus Christ and being saved and and, and realizing that God did so love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe would not perish but have everlasting life. It's important to realize, though, that even though we're here in enemy territory, seemingly, we have the most powerful means and most effective means of communicating with headquarters, that is the throne room of heaven, that is prayer. And when we pray, and when we have strong, sincere, fervent, and effective prayer lives, God makes the difference. Amen. And if any of you that are viewing this, and you can say amen in whatever, wherever you are, whatever venue you're watching this from, anyone here has ever prayed and God answered and worked a miracle on your behalf. That is the power of prayer. And in spiritual warfare, we're told in the Bible, James, the fifth chapter, the second half of the 16th verse in the NIV, that the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. When we have our hearts right toward God and right towards other people, our prayers are powerful and effective. Whatever you need, God will supply in the Amplified, it says the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. It means it's dynamic in its working. In other words, whatever we need, tell God. And just like in the army or in the armed forces, when a captain or even a private that has the, the radio or has the communication with headquarters, and he says, I need more air cover, or we need reinforcements, or we need supplies. Well, immediately headquarters is saying, get those supplies to that uh, battalion. Get those troops out of there. Give them what they need because they're fighting with us on our side, and we want to support them every way we can. That is the way God operates. So when you're going through, when it feels like you're under attack, don't cuss, don't fuss, don't, don't gossip, don't put it on Facebook or Twitter or anything else. Give it to God and pray. Amen. We are to pray constantly. And the scripture that I would share with you for this is in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, 17th verse. And it simply is three words that says, pray without ceasing. If we pray constantly, if we keep in communication with God constantly, it grows, not only grows our faith, it grows us spiritually, and it grows our ability to do battle with the spiritual forces that are arrayed against us. We don't feel like we're outnumbered. We don't feel like we're outgunned. We don't feel like, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're strangers in a pilgrim land. 
because we know God is with us. And all I have to do is talk to him and tell him all about it. And God will make the difference. Amen. Jesus teaches us to pray and not give up. Uh, we're to pray because being under constant bombardment, you know, being human and, and, and being in the natural, we get depressed. We, we, we get overwhelmed. We get tired. But Jesus tells us in Luke, the 18th chapter, starting at the first verse, that we are to pray and not never give up. And it says, one day, Jesus told his disciples a story or a parable to show that they should always pray and never give up. In verse two, he says, there was a judge in a certain city, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. Verse four, the judge ignored her for a while. But finally, he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. Then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you thank God? And, and, and Jesus is saying, <clears throat> Don't you think that the God who loves us, who cares about us, who made us, who knows all about what's going on, and this is God the Son telling us this? He said, Don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, meaning himself, how many will he find on earth who have faith? The key is we must have faith and we must maintain, hold on. That There was a, a, a saint that used to be at First Baptist, she's with the Lord now, who would say, uh, stake your claim and hold on to your hope. In other words, we can't give up. And whatever you do, when all else fails, make sure that you pray without ceasing. No matter what news is coming in, no matter uh, uh, what information is shared, negative, no matter what the circumstances look like, pray without ceasing because there's power in prayer. The key to obtaining victory through our prayers is maintaining steadfast faith in God. That's what Jesus is saying at the very end of this parable in verse eight. He says, when the son of man return, returns, how many will he find on earth who have faith? Faith, as we know, and I've shared uh, uh, about faith throughout these past weeks this month and, 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 and throughout this series. Faith is what binds us to the word of God and to the power of God. Amen. In Matthew, the 21st chapter, verses 21 and 22, Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree. Uh, just to set the stage, Jesus was traveling with his disciples, and that morning he went to the fig tree. It looked like it should have figs, but it didn't. And he cursed the fig tree because it was a lying fig tree. It had blooms and everything. Looks like it was going to be fruitful, but it wasn't. That's a lesson in itself. Uh, but it wasn't fruitful, and so he cursed it. And when they came back that evening, passing by that same way, the fig tree had withered. And they, the disciples marveled about it. They were like, wow, Lord, how did you do that? And he says, if you have faith and don't doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, this is Jesus talking, whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. In Matthew, the 17th chapter, the 19th and 20th verse, Jesus describes faith as small as a grain of mustard seed, which is very, very tiny. It's, it's about the size of the period on a sentence, really. 
And he says, if we have that much faith, we have the power to move mountains. We have power to get obstacles out of our way. This is spiritual warfare. This is how to move things in the spirit because we know that those things that are not seen have power and precedence over the things that are seen. Amen. That faith, as Jesus teaches us, shows us how powerful we are through him when we believe, no matter how small, no matter how minute the situation is, or no matter how large and overwhelming that situation may be. We must possess and exercise mustard seed faith. Amen. Mustard seeds are some of the tiniest seeds in nature. And so I would ask you just to think of a habanero pepper, which registers between 100,000 and 350,000 Scoville heat units on the Scoville scale. I'm talking to folks that like their hot sauce. Jalapenos are only 2,500 to 10,000 uh, in their heat. And just a little drop, and I like hot sauce like everyone else, and I, I have my favorite brands, but how many of you know that just one drop on a meal, just one drop on something that you're about to eat, it can heat it up pleasantly, or it can make it too hot to even put in your mouth. And things like wasabi, just one drop, it changes everything. And these spices, a drop or, or, or two, can heat up and change the entire flavor and texture of a dish. And they're used in some diets to stimulate the digestive tract, to burn calories, and even to clean, cleanse the system. Well, how many of us have the kind of faith where we have that mustard seed faith that can heat up a situation and burn away the obstacles that are between us and our breakthroughs. That's what Jesus wants us to do. Praying without ceasing means that we also take appropriate measures to make sure that our prayers get through to God. Let me share just a few things with you uh, to make sure that our prayers are unhindered. First, we must seek and maintain our saving relationship to God. Don't just pray when things get bad. We need to know God. We need to go after God. We need to seek God. Second, Chron Second Chronicles, the 15th chapter, the second half of verse two. The Lord is with you while you are with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Secondly, we cannot get comfortable with unrepented sins in our lives. We cannot allow ourselves to take on the mindset, well, everybody else is doing this or that, or, you know, I, I you know, say it jokingly. I, I, I yeah, I, I sin over here. I do. No. Uh, sin will block our prayers. Proverbs 28 and 9. If anyone turns a deaf ear to my instruction, even their prayers are detestable. God says, I don't even want to hear from you if you're ignoring my word, if you're ignoring the Holy Spirit. Number th uh, four, we must talk to God, not say empty words. Jesus warned against repetitive babbling, saying the same thing over and over and over. Uh, I, don't hear, I don't hear it much now because people are thank thankfully uh, enlightened and understand the need to talk to God, not just use prayer as an art form, where someone has sat down and wrote out a prayer 40 years ago and they're still saying the same thing. No, we must talk to God and not just say empty, repetitive words. Matthew, the sixth chapter in the eighth verse, Jesus says, when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Number five is so important. We must constantly forgive others. We must constantly forgive each other. We cannot hold grudges if we want our prayers heard. Mark the 11th chapter, the 25th and the 26th verses. When you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any, that your Father which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you your trespasses. We cannot pray with the wrong motives. 
I've heard people and I've, I've, I've counseled people who've asked, well, Lord, what if somebody prays that, that the Lord kill me? Well, God's not going to do that. That's not in his will. And when we pray, we cannot pray and ask for things that are selfish. Okay. It's one thing to say, Lord, I need a bigger house because my family is crammed in here, crowded in here. Things are not right. It, it, this is not your will for us that we live uh, a certain way. But it's another thing to pray simply for selfish reasons. Are you hearing me? James, the fourth chapter and the third verse. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives. God looks at the heart. Remember, we can only see what's on the outside, but God looks at and listens to what's going on in our hearts. And if we're praying because we want to be bigger than everybody else, better than everybody else, I want to be able to look down my long nose at, at everybody else, he, among other things, he's not going to do it. So he says in James 4 and 3, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. In other words, sometimes God can't answer that prayer. He cannot give some of the things that we ask for because that situation that we're trying to get set up, we will lift that over our relationship with God. We will revere that over our relationship with God. It's like I heard preachers years and years ago would say, God can't give you a new car because if he gives you a brand new car and it rains, you're going to miss church because you don't want to get the car wet and messed up. <laughs> Amen. And that's just one example, but that's something we have to think about. We also must avoid doubt and double-mindedness when we pray. When we pray and ask God for things in our lives, we must say, Lord, I'm trusting you. I don't have plan B, plan C, plan D. I'm giving this to you. If you don't work it out, then it's not going to be worked out. In James, the fifth chapter, verses five through seven, the Bible says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Now, Praying without ceasing, and, and this is something as we prepare to go into the Lent season even, I would ask if you can, and, and this goes for me as well, all of us, we get so busy. We have jobs, we have responsibilities, we have families, we have loved ones, you know, we want to attend to, we have other, you know, things, just so much going on. Even with the pandemic, we just have so many things going on. But effective prayer happens when we set time aside to spend alone with God. Just like there are times when my wife and I sit down and it's just us, no one else. I, I hide my phone, turn it off, turn off the TV or put it on mute or, or just put, get rid of all the distractions and it's just her and I. That is precious time to me. That's important time to me and I know it is to her. How much more do you think God appreciates when we take time and say, Lord, it's just me and you. I'm going to talk to you. And, and you know what? And this is another lesson that I'll, I'll say this. Lord, you talk back to me. Because sometimes when we pray, he'll bring a scripture or scriptures into mind. He'll remind us of, of, of a sermon that we've heard or, or, or something that one of the saints said in a conversation that would bless us or help us at that time. God talks right back to us. Prayer is not just a one-way communication. It's two-way. And if you really want to hear from God, take time. And sometimes it can't be more than 10 or 15 minutes. But even that, start there and take that time and talk to the Lord. Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 6, But when you pray, enter into your closet. And when you have shut your door, pray to your Father, which is in secret. And your Father, which sees in secret, shall reward you openly. Amen. We can go to God in full confidence because of Jesus Christ and the completed redemptive work that Christ did on Calvary. 
Hebrews, the fourth chapter and the 16th verse. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may re uh, receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. It's so important to allow God to have his way in our lives. And it's so important to realize that God is accessible. He is there. He's always listening, but we must pray without ceasing. And then the last thing I will share with you, when we pray, pray in Jesus' name. John, the 14th chapter and the 13th verse, Jesus says, I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Whenever you pray, always say, in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name I pray. You address the prayer to the Father as Jesus did in the, in the Lord's Prayer. Uh, Our Father, which art in heaven, in the model prayer, that's what it's also called. But when you end that prayer, in Jesus' name, amen. And that's how we get our prayers through. Th there are some in the Bible, and I don't have time to go into so many, but it was a, it was, uh, I'm sharing this because these are examples of spiritual warfare through prayer. And those in the Bible got their breakthroughs, their needs, their healings, their miracles because of prayer. Isaac, for example, Genesis, the 25th chapter, 21st verse, he prayed to the Lord because she was childless. She was not able to have children. The Lord answered his prayer and Rebecca became pregnant with twins. God didn't just bless them with a singleton or with, with, with one baby. He blessed them with twins. Jabez, 1 Chronicles 4 and 10. Jabez, whose life and was supposed to have been full of misery and because of the things that uh, were around him in his situation, he prayed and said to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me. Keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Hannah, the mother of Samuel, she was also childless. And she prayed and God blessed her with Samuel. Elijah, the Bible says in James 5 and 17, and you'll find the, the actual story of Elijah's life and what he was going through in 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. Uh, 20 through the 45th verse. And this is, this is the particular area where Elijah was really going through. But Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. He prayed earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth for three and a half years. How about Hezekiah who prayed and asked God to protect Judah in 2 Kings 19th chapter. And then in 2 Kings the 20th chapter after being told he was going to die. He prayed and God gave him 15 more years. How about Paul and Silas locked in jail in Philippi? And about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. I think this is Acts 16th chapter or so. And they were praying and singing and they, they were having church there. Hands were chained, their feet were in stocks, they were sitting on a cold, dirty, uh, dirt floor, and suddenly God freed them. There was a violent earthquake in the jail, shook them loose, set them free. These are just some examples of spiritual warfare. It looked like they were combating, all these different people were combating things in the natural, but because of prayer, and because of their faith, they talked to God and said, Lord, this is what's going on. This is what I need. I need your presence. I need your deliverance. I need your healing. I need your protection, whatever it is. And God delivered. Why? Because there's power in prayer. Lastly, I would share how Jesus Christ set the example for all of us as Christians. If we're going to be like him, we have to pray like him. We see Jesus in the Bible praying in early morning devotions. He had evening prayers. The Bible describes times when he prayed all night. And of course, he prayed so fervently 
in the Garden of Gethsemane as he prepared to go to the cross. He knew what was going to happen, and he knew he could do it, but he prayed anyway and said, if it's your will, Father, let this cup pass. But then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And even while on the cross, Jesus Christ prayed. So no matter where we are, no matter what we're dealing with, and I leave you with this, pray without ceasing because God is a mighty deliverer. Amen. God bless you. I pray that this series has been a blessing to you and to yours. Share it with those that can be encouraged, can grow in their walk in, with Jesus Christ, and that need power as we live this life on earth in the 21st century, because God is with us. Amen. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time in your word. We thank you for this series. We thank you for who you are in our lives. And we thank you, Father, that we can talk to you freely and often. We thank you for inviting us to pray without ceasing. And we thank you for answering our prayers, for having an ear, being attentive to every situation in our lives. Bless us, help us, heal us, hold us, provide for us and protect us, Father, in the name of Jesus. Remember those who are bereaved, those who are sick, who are afflicted. We need you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Touch as only you can and make the difference as only you can. And we're ever mindful to give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. God willing, see you this Sunday, 9.30 a.m., Main Sanctuary at First Baptist Church, 2114 Main Street. And then we'll see you online again, God willing, next week. And until then, May the good Lord bless you and yours real, real good. Amen. This is your latest from FBC. Come one, come all. The doors of the church are open and we invite you to come on in. We are now live and in person every week and we are no longer asking you to RSVP to attend service. We just ask that you come with your mask on and ready to praise God. Please join us Saturday, March 19th at 12 o'clock noon for the 7th Annual PT Man Safe Summer Internship Initiative Kickoff Fundraiser. Located at First Baptist Church, Melrose Park, 2114 Main Street, Melrose Park, Illinois. There will be musical selections and praise dance from special guest DJ Brandon, as well as a guest gift raffle. Please be mindful masks are required for this event. For more information or to make a donation, please visit www.ptman.org. The Food Pantry is open on Fridays from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. for drive-thru pickup. We are currently looking for extra hands to assist with lifting boxes. Please contact the ministry leaders if you are available. Thanks to all who assist weekly and God bless. Do you find yourself getting more shopping done online now more than ever? Don't forget you can support FBC every time you check out through Amazon. That's right, Amazon Smile is the same Amazon you know and love. But when you check out through Amazon Smile, they donate 0.5% of your purchase to First Baptist Church. So support FBC by shopping at smile.amazon.com. For all of these announcements and more, you can log on to our website to keep up with ministry, outreach, and other community information. We encourage not just for you, but for you to have your family and friends go to our social media platforms. Hit those like and subscribe buttons so you can get notified every time we are live. If you would like to be a blessing to First Baptist Church, it's easy via our giving platform. We encourage you to email or call us with your prayers reports because we know God is still manifesting his promises, even in a pandemic. God bless. And this is your latest from FBC.